Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I just wanted to say hello. My name is Chloe. I am someone who struggled for many years, about 11 years with anorexia, orthorexia, and exercise bulimia. And I am now fully recovered. And what I do in my life is I help other women recover too. Um, and it's been one of the best things in my whole life. Um, so I make these videos to hopefully be inspiration for you guys to continue on the path of recovery. These type of videos is what helped me so much in my recovery. Um, seeing other women who have been through it and being like, ah, okay, if they say that like, I it's great and like they love their life now, like okay. I can do it too. So today I just wanted to share with you guys some little inspiration here. If you're getting sort of blocked in your recovery, um, I'm someone who stayed in quasi recovery for many, many years um, without making that full push to go into full recovery. And I really regret it because I'm sitting here now fully recovered and I just want to look at you in the eyes and say it is 100% worth it. 100% you could not pay me. I'm not even kidding. You could not pay me a million dollars to go back to where I was before and what I was doing. My life is so great right now. It is so full. It is so nourishing in so many ways. Nourishing with the things that I do with my friends, with um, good food, but nourishing in... Um, this sort of new energy of being, which is way more relaxed, nourishing the fact that I get good sleep, like everything in my life. I'm not saying my life is like bright and perfect, but I'm just saying going back to that dark place of being in my eating disorder is not something that I want to do now that I'm recovered. And I understand your fears right now. And I I was there. I really, really get it. And I understand, but I just want to tell you, and hopefully this helps someone. I just want to tell you that it's worth running into those fears to get to be recovered. It really, really is. I promise you the weight gain seems absolutely just insanely frightening right now. And it seems like, Oh my gosh, I can't gain weight. I can't, you know, I can't allow myself to do that, and I know it seems so scary, but trust me, I promise you, it is scary to you because you are in your eating disorder mindset, but once you get into a healthy mindset, once you get out of energy deficiency, all of a sudden, gaining weight is not so freaking scary, like, now it's just like, oh, okay, whatever, like, there's so much pressure that you're putting on yourself right now to look a certain way, to eat a certain way, to exercise a certain way, and once you start just Step by step, you know, um, undoing all of these behaviors and attachments that you have, all of a sudden you go, oh, this isn't that big of a deal. And you gained weight and you realize that you also gained a life. You gained deeper connections with other people. You gained food freedom. You gained your period. If you lost your period, um, you gained a sense of being grounded and secure and happy. And you gain, um, you gain vitality, you gain sex drive, you get your sex drive back, you get um, your thick hair back, you get like there's so many things that come back to you when you get out of energy deficiency and when you let go of your eating disorder that trust me, all these things um, are so great that it is not worth um, just staying a certain size or um, sticking to a certain dietary regime. It's not worth it. Despite the fact that I am many, many, many pounds heavier than I was before, I am so much more confident. I honestly think that I have such a different beauty about me now that I am in my full, like, womanly body. For me, my eating disorder um, took me into a really, really low, dangerous body weight, and I was so skinny and emaciated and my bones were sticking out my collarbones my ribs and I had zero boobs and my butt was flat and it hurt to sit on it and um I was always like on the verge of fainting I was always so dizzy no duh I wasn't eating of course I was but I was just so frail and so insecure and I didn't want people looking at my body and it was just very like I was trying to just like hide all the time 
and then I recovered and I was like, hello, my name is Chloe, nice to meet you guys. Like, I was just so vibrant and happy and people could see it. Um, so many people who had no idea about my, um, about my journey with food and all of that and who knew about my recovery journey and everything. So many random people would look at me and be like, you look so different right now. Like, you look so happy. This is such a new Chloe. Like, I had some people do sort of this, like, freak out experience. Um, sort of like, oh my gosh, like, who is this person? Like, you're, you're so different. And this is amazing. And I had friends tell me, they're like, I didn't want to tell you before, but like, I hated eating lunch with you. Like, I did not ever want to eat with you because it was painful to try and watch you eat. It was painful to, you're so slow. You just, taking little bites, you're leaving half of the food there, you're being so picky about the food menu, can you take the oil off, can you make that no sugar, can you go no meat, can you add tofu, can you, and they're like, oh my gosh, I was like, I couldn't handle it, but they're like, now that you're recovered, like, you're so fun to hang out with, and you're so fun to go to lunch with, and like, I hope you guys see in my face right now, just like, how vibrant I am, I am so much happier and I'll try and put up a picture like you can see I was so gaunt like I literally was like I had no like life in my face and my eyes were sunken in and there was a disconnect um with my eyes I could feel it like I could feel that I just wasn't able to actually connect with someone and it's because my head was just so off in la la land I was constantly thinking about calories and macros and fat grams and how much I exercise, how much I need to exercise tomorrow. Like, is someone going to offer me food? Then I shouldn't go there because they're going to offer me food and that's going to be scary. So I should say that I had to go make a stop somewhere else before I could get there before they ate. It was just like, oh my gosh, my head was overloaded with all this stuff to try and please my eating disorder. And now that I don't have an eating disorder to please, it's like, I can just be a human being. And it is, and it is so, so, so absolutely great. I love being recovered. I love the fact that I eat dinner with my family every single night and I could not care less what is on my plate. I'm there for the experience of eating with my family. I'm there to commune with others, to share about our day, to enjoy good food together. <sighs> It saddens me that I missed out on so many of these family dinners. It really does, um, because they're such a precious thing to me now. Like, I just, I couldn't imagine just sitting in my room eating by myself anymore. Like, that's just, it's not, it's not fun and it's not healthy. If you're wanting to be healthy, wow, healthy is having a good community, a great support group. Healthy is being able to enjoy a meal with other people. Like These are essential things that are so nourishing to our lives, but in eating disorders, we just completely cut it off. And what's funny is oftentimes we cut it off because we are on the quest for a happy, healthy life. And we're like, no, well, I have to stick to this strict keto, no carb, no sugar, no meat, no anything diet <laughs> because I want to be healthy and strong. But it's like, okay, but in the meantime, you're socially isolating yourself and you're not, you know, getting that beautiful nourishing aspect of life that comes from being close to others. And so let's see what that does to your longevity. Like when we look at the blue zones, the Okinawans, for example, are one of the longest lived people in the world. And um, one of the traits that all of these blue zones, these places um, have in common is the fact that they all have very strong community ties. They have big families. They have lots of friends. They do things with their friends. They're in community. I think it's in Sardinia, Italy, where it's like the same. Um, you grow up with like this group of people that you live your life with. And so these people are like 100 years old and they're still friends with the friends that they're friends with at five years old. Like that is amazing. And that's what we need because we can't do this life alone. It is not sustainable. That's when we get anxiety and depression. And um, that's when we can feel hopeless about life, but having the joy of other people around us is really key. It has been key for me, I should say. Really, really key. And I just, I, I could not take this back. And say, okay, say I am eating crappy and I live five years younger. Okay, let's say that. 
I will take this beautiful, say, 85 years that I have of just enjoying my life and traveling and adventuring and thinking about bigger and grander things than just my body and how much I ate. Um, going out to dinner and doing potlucks and um, relaxing and all this good stuff that comes with recovery. Like, I will take those 85 years, over 90 or 95 years of straight rigid diet and rigid exercise routine and not being able to travel because I don't know what's going to be like over there regarding food and all of that and not having close relationships with people because I can't even do this thing called eating, which every single human being does and that's what we bond over. Like, I would easily, easily say no to those extra 10 years if that's what I meant. And again, keep in mind that I'm not just someone who has no idea what you're going through right now and has none of the fears that you have right now. Um, I had all of those and I was exactly where you are right now. Not exactly. Everyone's different, but I was in a similar place to you right now. And I'm sharing with you that once you get to this recovered place, once you neurally rewire and you nutritionally rehabilitate your body, all of a sudden, all these things that are super scary to you are not scary. I don't fear food anymore. I don't fear skipping a workout. Like, it's just all silliness to me now. And my life is so much better now that now that my eating disorder is past me. So this was a really long video, but I want to start making things that aren't so, like, structured. I don't think it was ever too structured. But this is real life right here, okay? I'm in my, like, sweats. I'm just in my office and I just felt inspired to help you guys along this path and to know that it takes little baby steps. So look at your life every day and be like, what can I do better tomorrow? Can I eat a fear food tomorrow? Can I go to a restaurant and have someone else pick out what I'm going to eat? My pen's like flying everywhere. Um, can I, can I skip one day of exercising? Can I switch my hot yoga class to a regular yoga class? Like, what are these small things that you can do that will, I promise you, lead you to freedom? Because when you're in this quasi-recovery place, you're not experiencing any of the benefits of full recovery. Quasi-recovery really just means, hey, I'm in a place where I maybe have gained a couple pounds and I eat a little bit more. But I still have all the anxiety, the fears, all the negative um, ailments and symptoms of an eating disorder. And I'm still doing sometimes ir um, irreparable damage to my organs and to my fertility and all this stuff. So don't stay in quasi-recovery. Get to that place where you're fully recovered. You have a monthly menstrual cycle. You're at a normal BMI. And I don't mean the like very end at like 18, okay, BMI. I'm talking about like you're a normal human being. You're at like a 22 BMI or something like that, okay? I'm not all for sticking to numbers, but I hopefully you're just like getting the idea here. Don't try and just like barely recover. Just like freaking go the whole, the whole 10 yards, like. Let's recover, let's get this over with, and then we can enjoy our life. All right, this really is longer than I wanted. If you have any questions, of course, you can always email me. You can follow me on Instagram at flowwithchloe. I'm there every single day, um, and yeah, good luck with everything. It's hard, but you can do it, trust me. I thought, I thought it was just like not possible for me. I was like 11 years of damage of really messing up my relationship with food, really messing up my body, not having a period for 11 years. I was like, that's it. That's it. It's never coming back. I'm never going to be recovered. And my hair is always going to be falling out. I'm always going to have insomnia. I'm always going to be anxious about food. And it's just not a reality for me anymore. So it doesn't have to be a reality for you anymore too, but that takes commitment. If you're needing help with this commitment, um, again, email me. Coaching is really good for this because it keeps you committed and it gives you such a great support system of someone who knows what you're going through right now and who can help you get through it because there's a lot of things that I wish I knew going through my recovery that I know a coach would have been able to help me 
understand like this is what's going to happen and this is how we move through it instead of being like oh this is happening or I have to go back into all these behaviors it's like ah stop it like that's not what's good for you like okay let's just understand what's going to happen I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to walk through this and I'm going to get over to the other side so anyways much love to you guys bye